Hi everyone. In the last video, we took a look at uh, creating lerps using this cube in our scene. So we have this object that's lerping between my mouse position that's casting a ray cast on this plane, and this box follows my mouse's movement. Uh, if my mouse goes off, we see that the box stops, but as soon as it enters the plane, the box tries to get to wherever my mouse position is. All right, so what we're going to do now is take what we've learned about lerps and apply that um, to our um, enemy that we have jumping inside of our adversary scene. So I'm going to jump back to our adversary scene here. So um, I believe, is it this? Nope. Here it is in the nav mesh scene here. And uh, right now, he just kind of like floats across the off mesh links. So I'm going to try to jump over here and show you in this example. Gets over to me and goes zip right across, right? So what I want him to do is I want him to hop across, get some, like, some sort of jump going, some sort of jump action going. So what we're going to do is create a new script for this, and it's going to use a lerp, and we're going to detect when we get to those off mesh links. Uh, so I'll go to my scripts folder here, and I'll right click, create C sharp script, and we'll call this enemy jump. All right, so we have the enemy jump script up here, and uh, Actually, no, I don't. I have lerp test up. So let's open up enemy jump. There we go. And we're going to get rid of everything inside of this. This is all going to operate via coroutines. So um, to get this started, uh, we're going to automatically start a coroutine using IE numerator start. And this is just a type of coroutine that's built into Unity um, that starts off as a coroutine. And uh, what we're going to do is this is going to be on our navigation mesh uh, agent, which is our zombie. And we're going to have to use using Unity Engine.ai for this. Okay, so we get using Unity Engine.ai. First thing we'll do is we'll grab the nav mesh agent. So nav mesh agent, and we'll set this to agent. And we'll say agent equal to um, get component nav mesh agent. All right, so we've got that started. Um, from there, we will then tell the agent not to auto traverse off mesh link. So we'll say agent dot auto traverse off mesh link and that'll be set equal to false. Next um, we will then create a while loop. So we'll say while and uh, we'll say while true um, if agent um, dot is off mesh link. So if agent is off mesh link, we will basically start another coroutine. So we're going to start a coroutine So start jump coroutine, and then uh, we will call agent dot complete off mesh link. Okay. Um, after that, we will yield return null. So yield return. Oops, well, there we go. Return null. Then we'll return null. 
So we're going to need another coroutine to be able to call that jump. So we're going to say I enumerator. Call this jump. And uh, jump is going to have a couple of parameters that are associated with it. It's going to need the nav mesh agent. So this is nav mesh agent. We'll call it agent. We're also going to need a float for how high we want to jump. And uh, we're also going to need a float for the duration of the jump. All right, so we have that coroutine created. Um, we will then grab the off mesh link data. Um, so we'll say off mesh link data. And we'll call this data. And we're going to grab the agent off mesh link data. So agent, oops. Uh, off mesh link data. Mm. I am sorry, agent dot current off mesh link data. There we go. All right, so I've got that. Um, the next thing we're going to need is a start position for the jump. So we'll say this is going to be a vector three. And we'll call it start POS. Oops. So start POS. And we'll set that equal to agent dot transform dot position. Okay. And then we're gonna want our end position. So this is gonna be another vector three. We'll call it end POS. And we'll set this equal to um, data dot end position. So this is going to actually grab it from the off mesh link. So it's end POS. All right. Um, next, we'll set a variable for float that's going to store our time. And we'll set this equal to zero F. And um, from here, we're then going to want to create a while loop. So the while loop is going to check to see if time is less than 1f. So while time is less than 1, we're basically going to perform a lerp here that's going to lerp between the start position and an end position. Okay, uh, so um, the first thing we'll do is create a float here, and this is going to give us our height, so our up distance for our height. So float, and we'll call this up dist, and we're going to set this equal to height, and we're going to multiply height by time minus time times time. So this is going to be time minus time times time. Okay, time minus time times time. Um, we will then take the agent stop position. So I need transform dot position and set it equal to our lerp. So we'll say vector three dot lerp and we'll start lerping those positions so um, the lerp is going to be our start POS our end POS and our time which is going to be the duration we're then going to add to this up distance and we're going to multiply that by vector three dot up. All right. So that should give us our up value. 
We'll then um, advance time so that we can eventually end this loop. So we'll say time is plus equals time dot delta time. And we'll divide that by our duration. And then last but not least, we need to exit the loop, which is a yield return null. All right, so this script, I don't see any errors in it. We should be able to save it and just add it to our enemy now. So I'll jump back into Unity, let it refresh, and I'll drag and drop the enemy uh, jump script on our agent. Just select and make sure it's there. And uh, let's hit play and uh, run over to the off mesh link here. And let them approach us. Oh, we just kind of blinked. But if I jump to this one, let's see what he does here. I just kind of instantly blinks. So he should be looping through. So let me check something here. You know something? Now that I think about it, uh, we never called the jump coroutine inside of our start class. So right over here, remember I said start jump coroutine? I totally forgot to go back and do that. So let's add that in. So we're gonna say here, yield return. Uh, let's see, yield return. And um, I'm gonna say yield return start coroutine. So we're never starting that other coroutine. My apologies. And in parentheses here, we're going to call the jump coroutine and pass to it some values, which are going to be the agent um, to f and uh, 0.5f. And then put a semicolon at the end here. And I think that will do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I forgot. So we'll save that. And the script is on here. Let it update. And let's run over. And there he goes. Now he doesn't have an animation for jumping. I'll let you guys figure that on your out on your own. All it is is adding a jump animation state to him. And you can see there's a little hop now. Very cool. And if I uh, jump, I can, have, I can pretty much fly the way my character controller is set up at the moment. But yep, pop, pop, and he hops all the way up and comes after me. Okay. So that's, so that's how you can add a little bit of hop to your character controller and then all you'd have to do from there is add that animation for the jumping state and um, really he just has to go into like kind of a jumping state. Um, there's a couple of different places you could add that. Um, you could add that in your state machine for your wave finding system for the animation. Um, you could set it here, you know, while he's jumping. Um, set the animation state on the animation controller to true for a jumping animation. But like I said, I'll let you guys figure that out on your own. Um, and that's it. I'll see you in the next video.